Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the channel on a chilly Saturday morning here in Central Virginia. Today is the 24th of April, and I'll apologize ahead of time for the sniffles. The pollen count is like 7 million parts per million or however they measure that stuff. So apologize ahead of time for the sniffles. Um, last two videos, the over easy coop, the large one, um, the assembly, and then the review. Um, the run is done. Um, let me, let me show you, like, I'm not a carpenter. Like I said before, I can't even drive a nail straight. So buddy, Jonathan was a huge help and helped me get this run together. Everybody knows that the price of lumber is higher than a cat's ass right now, uh, because of supply and demand and everybody and their mom building stuff and all that good stuff. So I sourced my lumber from a local mill, uh, in Dinwiddie County, about, uh, well, it was about an hour from my house. Called the guy at family owned operation, real nice folks. Um, pine two by fours. He cut them on a Wednesday. They were out in the field cutting or in the woods cutting, whatever they do. Um, and I said, I needed 52. I had no idea how much wood I needed. I bought too much. Um, and he said, do you want them, um, like full length or like little true two by fours? And I'm like, man, I've never seen a real two by four. So I said, absolutely. So let me show you, let me show you this, this wood right here. So this is a this is a real two by four. Um, and my buddy Jonathan said, he, he said it's some of the best wood that he's ever seen. Now for a, a two, five, two, by, two by four by eight, he added, uh, the guy added like four inches on the end so you could truly cut it to whatever you want, need a little bit more, whatever. So um, $5.32 per board, which at the time was a dollar and 50 cents less expensive than uh, whatever Lowe's or Home Depot calls a two by four um, uh, per board. So um, bought more than I needed. I'll have, I'll, if I want to build something else 20 years from now, I'll have enough wood. Um, the wood was super, super green, super, super heavy. Um, it's funny, uh, within about two weeks, um, two weeks of purchasing it and bring it back home, the weight is basically cut in half. Now I have the other others standing up on their ends in my shed. Now they have dried out. A few have a tiny little bow to them. I don't have a solar kiln. I don't have any way of laying them flat and putting um, stickers or whatever they, little little um, uh, wedges um, in between them to keep them straight and to keep them, um, you know, to keep them from bending a little bit. But their two by fours are nice and thick and they're great wood. So let me show you the, uh, the run real quick. So uh, 12, let's see. 12 by, what'd we go with? 12 by eight? Yeah, so we went 12 by eight. Um, we have some supports down here uh, to help to help maintain uh, the stability. And again, uh, the, true, the true two by fours, uh, we didn't notch them or do anything crazy. You know, we just went ahead and, um, and uh, joined them here at the main beam. A um, little bit of an overhang at the top. So we got the uh, the galvanized. I got that from Home Depot. Um, yeah. Yes, I know, ladies. Yeah, threw a couple motion lights. You know, got these on Alibaba for about three dollars and fifty cents. Um, the Predator apron. So down here, I uh, I misjudged the the amount of hardware cloth that I would need. So I put hardware cloth. It's down um, underneath the mulch, and then here's a bunch of the extra two by fours. Um, I, mis I, I miscalculated how much I needed. So when I ran out of hardware cloth, I just went ahead and put uh, like a double layer of the chicken wire down uh, underneath the mulch. Um, so let's see, kind of this um, screen door, got it Lowe's, went ahead and uh, had, this is, had some hardware cloth left over, put hardware cloth on that, and basically the, the same thing all the way around. Um, the roof is sloped uh, to keep the rain off. And if the ladies will let me in, I will show you guys what's going on. Yes, ladies, hello, hello. So these guys, they're um, golden comets. Yes, I know. So they came from a farm uh, about, about 45 minutes away. And um, they're, about, they're about 17 weeks old uh, when we got them. I know, I know, Seven, about 17 weeks old. Um, what you doing? What you doing down there? Um, and so they were pretty, very close to the point of laying. Um, 
we did lose one. Uh, no idea what happened. Uh, she was uh, in the coop laying down when I went to work. Uh, maybe she was egg bound. I don't know. Um, and when I came home, she was dead in the run. No sign of struggle. Nobody got in the coop. Can I help you? Uh, nobody got in the coop. So that was unfortunate. That was kind of sad. Um, but they are laying now. Oh, went back to the farm and the young lady replaced it at no cost. Very nice lady. Um, so they are laying now. Ouch. Um, would you stop it? They um, lay in the afternoon. Ouch. Dude, they're scratching at my boots. So, you know, I bring the scratch out a little bit every morning and evening and they've already had it. And, you know, if you guys have chickens, you know how this works. Whoever brings out the food, you're like the most important person in the world. Um, so, so they are laying, um, gosh, I think we've got a dozen over the last three or four days, three yesterday and pretty much consistently, ouch, consistently two, two eggs in the afternoon, none in the morning none at night. When I come home for about five, there's always <clears throat> two or three, two or three eggs there. Um, oh, about the mulch. So yeah. I'm not sure why I decided to put mulch out here. Well, I put it out here for you guys to dig through, right? So, so they free range at the um, at the farm. So, you know, I'm a big softy, so I feel bad. I'm like, oh, you know, let me free, let them free range while I'm doing yard work. So what I've done is I just took a bunch of the chicken wire and I just made just a just a silly run that that you know that goes around and um, and so when I'm out doing yard work. Um, I just, I just let them out in this tiny little pen and, uh, every couple days I move the stakes so they don't tear up the yard, but so much. So I moved it last night. So we stay out here for a couple hours in the morning. Um, and then, uh, they'll go back in and then in the evening I'll come out, we'll hang out and chit chat, uh, right before they go to bed. Um, so inside, um, yeah, it took them about a week to, uh, totally destroy the grass and I knew that was going to happen go into tractor supply today and get some straw or some hay and throw down to help them out a little bit um, Excuse me guys They love the weeds. So I dig up big tufts of weeds and throw it in here and they go bananas um, I made this little guy. I had some extra pressure treated wood around so they like hanging around on that Threw an extra piece of wood up here. They like sitting up here and pooping um, Had a holly tree right here that I uh that I uh, uh, cut down. So they like to stand on that stump to make room for the coop. Um, dust bath, um, right up on the dust bath. So, you know, here's the, here's the dust bath and they absolutely love it. So they're in there quite a bit. Uh, again, like everybody else went to YouTube, checked out all the different types of waterers and, and feeders. And so I did the old, uh, the little cups. These, these don't have the, um, uh, the little yellow nipple things or whatever, the little plunger things. Um, and that those came from rent a coop. Um, they're working really well. I think I might do like a watering bar, um, instead of that. I, they, these things are so the cups get dirty. Uh, they run all over the top of the barrel and, uh, man, do they drink a lot of water. So the feeder was kind of cool. Saw several different versions of this on, uh, on YouTube. So, uh, you know, um, three, three inch PVC, um, and what four foot tall. We got the little, got the little Y's or whatever the heck you want to call it down here. And then I saw one gentleman, he put that little, this little piece of PVC down the middle. And basically that keeps all of the, uh, all the feed from running all the way out. Uh, because I, I don't have the one that has, there's, there's other versions, you know, they have like 45s and all sorts of elbows here that the chickens have to reach down. So I've got, um, I've got some pellets. They basically just, if it has crumbles, they just basically just tear it up and tear all the crumbles out. So, um, this is the bottom of a, just a little plastic, uh, cup that I had. I went ahead and cut that out. Um, Gorilla glued that in. So that, that keeps it, that keeps it from, uh, from, uh, them wasting the food. Got it on here with a little, uh, bungee bungee strap uh, so that's basically it um they seem to really enjoy it they, they're very happy these golden comets are so friendly um you know the first couple of days we had them you can pick them up you can pet them of course they think i'm the rooster so i go to pet them and they you know they hunker down because they think you know i'm ready to do the rooster thing but um so they're they seem to be very happy 
Um, I did let them free range once, excuse me, ladies. I did let them free range once. Um, and that was a mistake. Um, and I was warned not to do that. And I'm like, I've got this. And of course they just went crazy. Um, I'm thinking, oh, they'll stay like in a little flock and I can just herd them back into the coop. Mm -mm. No, nope, they went everywhere. It took a while, but, uh, I got them back in. So anyway, I want to introduce you to one more, uh, one more member of the family. So there's the chickens back here. So this is Mr. Rogers. So Mr. Rogers, I know Mr. Rogers, say hi to YouTube. So Mr. Rogers is a feral cat and I've had him for about four years now. Um, haven't we? You're a good boy, aren't you? You're a good boy. So I've had, I've had him for about four years. The first two years, he would never come uh, really into the yard. And so I'd put the food out in the middle of the yard and he would come out and he would eat. Then he'd run back to wherever, you know, feral cats go. The third year, um, he actually came up on the deck and I bought one of those little um, uh, heated cat houses and he slept in the heated cat house every once in a while when it got super, super cold, he would sleep in there. But again, wouldn't let me get near him. So we moved to like year three, three and a half and um, he now comes around and he has, I put a little cat door um, in the garage door. Uh, and he uh, comes through the cat door and he's been sleeping in the garage for quite some time. So he's a, he's a great cat. Um, he, he lets me pet him now, finally, uh, but he's certainly very independent. I was able to take him to the vet and got him squared away, got him neutered to keep his little, uh, his little rambling, uh, night ramblings down to a, down to a dull roar. So, um, yeah, he's a great cat. And here's the cool thing about it. When he was, uh, when the, when the chickens were free ranging that first time, he just sat out here and just laid down. He could care less. He doesn't care what the chickens are doing, but the cool thing about it is whenever I come out into the yard, he has to come out here and he normally sits there. He gets up on the fire pit or he sits here right next to the coop and he thinks he's like, you know, the, the sheep dog that guards the sheep or he'll get over there on the utility trailer or he'll lay down behind the coop and just kind of hang out. So he's a, he's a real cool cat. Um, well, that, that sounded terrible, no pun intended, but, um, great little cat. So I want to introduce you to, uh, to Mr. Roger. So I hope everybody is uh, having a good weekend. If you have any questions about the run, uh, you guys are much better at doing this stuff than I am, but I'd be more than happy to, uh, to answer any of those questions. Um, all right, everybody have a good weekend. Enjoy your chickens. And, uh, just, I love the eggs. Oh my gosh. I love the eggs. Anyway. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye.